Yeah? And Randall had microphone. Like, um, advertisements, but get to go. Oh. Advertisements, advertisements. Oh, crap, it's all the way over there, isn't it? Should I start or? Okay. Okay. Are we starting the timer? Yep. Okay, excellent. Um, so, uh, this lightning talk is about a hackathon that the Oslo PM guys are organizing in, and I'm going to butcher the names of all the places in when I mention them here. Stavanger, I think is how you say it. Stavanger, thank you. Uh, Norway. And it's the 25th of August through the 30th of August. Okay. For those of us in, or for, for, for our EU people, it's really not that far, so you don't have that much of an excuse. <laughs> us Americans have a little bit more of an excuse, but still that fits on a slide, so, you know. <laughs> you should be able to get there. The Brazilians maybe have a little bit more of an excuse. Do not a little. Yeah. Um, it's going to be taking place at the, and can you please help me with the pronunciation on this one? Prekistolen. The Prekistolen Mountain Lodge. Um, so in beautiful Prekistolen. Um, here, okay, so we're, we're also hopefully planning, uh, weather permitting, and I'm sure, I mean, Norway in August, it's got to be nice, um, weather permitting a hike, it's a five kilometer walk from the lodge, uh, to here, this is pulpit rock, beautiful, beautiful uh, view, and we can potentially throw Python programmers off the edge if we find <laughs> them or something, I mean, whatever you want to do. Um, so it's a, it's a dual, um, uh, dual subject hackathon, uh, the, one of the first things is uh, the RDF modules, okay, so there's been a lot of discussion in the RDF community about moving these modules over to Moose and sort of taking advantage of some of the meta layer features that Moose has. Um, so there's really, there's two goals for the hackathon. One is to uh, re-architect RDF Trine and RDF Query to use Moose. Um, and then another one to uh, build more of an automated system to take RDF semantics um, over uh, and bind them with the Moose and the MOP. So if you're interested in RDF or the semantic web or anything like that, um, come along. And again, see beautiful view. Look at those people up there. And all that. Beautiful. And again, beautiful view again. I mean, look. Look, look how tiny that boat is. It's huge. <laughs> okay? You don't get stuff like that in the States. Come on, guys. Um, the the second, uh, second topic is, um, so I, I've been working on a uh, project to try and get, the, get a mop into the Pearl 5 core. Um, I'm not going to promise a date on that at all. Christmas, Easter, sometime around there. Um, so uh, part of the hackathon is going to be about that. Um, we've got a couple, uh, uh, couple agendas for that. More tests, okay? So the idea is we're going to uh, write this prototype. We're going to write a lot of tests for it, and those tests will just only go back into the core, so it'll help to make sure that it's, it's, a, it's a solidly tested piece before it makes it into core. Um, roles, uh, we're still working on the low-level design of roles in the meta object system, so if that interests you in any way, come and hack with us. Um, the docs need updating. Um, as Dave Rolski can attest to, I'm a horrible speller, my grammar is bad, <laughs> and I really should never write docs. So anybody wants to come and help, you know, spell check my stuff and add to it, that'd be great. Um, integration with Pearl Core, so anybody familiar with the Pearl Core, please come, okay? Because, uh, you know, that's one thing I'm not necessarily familiar with, and the more we know about it and the more we're doing this from an informed point of view, the more possibility of success we have. Um, and then, of course, integration with Pearl 6. I think, Patrick, you're also, are you for sure coming? I'm not for sure coming. Okay. Guilt Patrick into coming, please, okay? Um, but Jonathan Worthington is coming, so we want to make sure that, you know, again, we're trying to get something uh, that will work as well with Pearl 5 and, and uh, hopefully bridge to Pearl 6. And anything really Moose-related, it's open, so if you have a, a module or something like that and you want to move to Moose and you want to get uh, other people doing it, come to Norway, because you can't do that from home. You have to go to Norway. <laughs> Um, so here's a couple important dates, um, and I know this is running a little late, but June 25th is the deadline. After that, they, they need to know, they need to tell the lodge on June 25th, or actually June 26th, that uh, the number of people that they have. So if you want to do it, um, that's an important date, okay? Um, there is, again, there's limited space and stuff like that, but we do, do still have some space. Um, Saturday, we're all sort of making our way to that. So this is actually right after YAPC EU. So if you're going to the FCEU and you happen to be on the other side of the Atlantic already, maybe just take a couple extra days. 
um, and then the hackathon, um, and then if weather allows, to the visit to Prekestolen, um, and then the 30th, we all clear up and go home. Um, so, if you're interested, the Oslo PM channel on irc.pearl.org, uh, talk to the people there. Remember, June 25th is the deadline, and we're also in the, yak, uh, the ACT system, so, what? Oh. <laughs> I just finished them. <laughs> so, yeah, the, the also, if you go there, they won't tell you anything. Oslo, sorry. <laughs> yeah, exactly, it's a spelling. Dave, you know how it goes. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 right to left. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that, the, the, that's the URL if you want to go there and, and do it. And I think I'm 10 seconds short. There you go. All right, thank you. Oh, come see me, too. One last thing. We do have some community, uh, they do have some money for community sponsorship, too. So uh, if, if you're really, truly interested in it, come talk to me, and we can, we can talk to the guys and see what money's left and uh, get you over there and help pay for some of the costs as well. There you go. Inspirational and uh, humbling yeah. experience, and uh, I just want to thank my company, Pithin, for making this happening. Uh, they sponsored me to come here, and uh, it was great. And I just wanted to mention that they're looking for Perl developers. Uh, they are based in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, and uh, they're basically a database workshop and operating globally throughout the world. So, if anybody is interested, one point in time, coming to Ottawa, it's a great city, very beautiful. Um, yeah, uh, find me out or find Pithian online, and we'll be happy to have you. Thank you. Good everyone. This is, in some ways, a follow-up to Shwen's keynote, but a much, much shorter version. So, the people who use Perl, Shwen said, and I'm going to tell you as well, are not entirely like us, not entirely like the people who are in this room. DevC99, it's a view of what we were. But I'm going to ask for hands up. If you do not feel comfortable raising your hand, even if you fit into the demographics I ask, just keep it down. I don't mind. Hands up for those who are women. Look around. Okay. Hands up if you identify as non-white. Okay. What if you're young? What if you're under 35? <laughs> okay, what if you, you primarily develop under Windows? No booing. No, not allowed. The Perl.org community is not the same as all the users of Perl. And Chuan gave us this excellent visualization. There are a lot more groups of people who are using Perl. Yes, Noreen created this. There are a lot more users of Perl than the people who turn up to these conferences. Now, I do training. My job is to teach new people Perl. And there are a number of other trainers in this audience that I've spoken to over the course of this week in generating the numbers I give you in the slide. These are somewhat gut feelings. None of us have gone and done demographic surveys of our students, but we have been doing this for years. So we have a good feeling for these numbers. And what, the first question I said, what is your conversion rate to community? Hey, students, come along to Melbourne Pearlmongers or Sydney Pearlmongers. I try to get them to come along. It's probably a lot lower than even you would hope. These people just want to do Pearl for their jobs. These are the people I'm seeing. This is why they're not in this room. This is why our demographics are different. This makes me angry anyway. So, again, this is primarily from training in Australia, but I have spoken to the trainers in this conference area and got f figures for elsewhere as well. So let's have a look at the kinds of things, numbers I'm seeing. What do you think the ratio between men and women would be? Schwen gave you a number, and it's about right. About 20% of my course attendees are women. 
as you noticed, we sort of didn't quite get that. Not white versus non-white, up to about 30%. Not so much in my course, courses in Australia, but with the discussions of the other trainers, 30% is not an unreasonable number. Awesome. Again, not something we're reflecting here. Age. Most of my students are young. In fact, and I mean, this sort of makes sense in many ways, but my typical ages are between 25 and 35. They're out of university, they may be into their first or second job, now they're learning Perl. This one, this is what started the, the, this lightning talk because I'm, I brought this up. Every single time I, t I start a training course, I say, who amongst you intend to primarily develop under Windows? They put their hands up. Who uh, primarily intend to develop under something like uh, some Unix kind of operating system? They put their hands up, and it's 50-50. And the other trainers said so too, except for the trainer who refuses to train under Windows. <laughs> so, for all of those people who think Perl is just a Unix thing, get over it and stop boo hissing Windows, because we are not just Perl. Thank you. So, uh, hi, quick announcement. Uh, you rock. <laughs> You're all crazy. <laughs> Well, thanks a lot for the uh, the white camo thing. I'm 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 Garu, by the way. Uh, hi, nice to meet you. I, I want to invite everybody to Yapsi Brazil. I mean, we're not as fancy as uh, as this. I mean, this is totally awesome. But we try our best, and we are very friendly. And if you can make it, it'll be awesome, and we'll be delighted to have you. So thank you. Yeah. October 19th this year. E every year is about. Uh, uh, late October, early November. So even if you can't make it this year, make sure you book it for next year or the year after. And, well, we'll be delighted to have you. Thank you. Hey, my name is Mike Aquilina, and I'm a web developer, which is pretty awesome because I get to build cool things in Perl all day long. But it's less awesome because once I'm done, I have to prove that it works. And... Uh, the industries that I work in are very big on formal acceptance testing. I'm sure that's karma paying me back for something awful I did in a past life. <laughs> and it's just not a lot of fun. I wind up uh, writing hundreds of pages of plain English test plans, verifying every inane detail of what the application does. I write Selenium tests to verify the behavior of the application. I send these test plans to my QA guy who runs through them for hours and then sends me emails letting me know that the corners are not rounded and IE. <laughs> and I perform the acceptance test with the client, which is their opportunity to ignore the 100-page test plan and let me know about all the features they wanted that are not in the spec. <laughs> and <laughs> this works pretty well. You know, people have been doing it for a long time, but it takes a lot of time, costs me a lot of money. And unlike writing software, it's just not awesome. Uh, so I do some contract work for Grant Street Group, and I was griping to them about this. And uh, they told me, you got to check out this application that we're working on. I checked it out, actually worked on it a little bit. And it's pretty cool. It's called Testify. It's a web application test automation framework. Let's you write self-documenting plain English text. Has a native Perl client that spits out beautiful tap output. And it lets you get screenshots. This is all within your plain English test documentation that, at least in my case, I got to write anyways. So it allows me to take these inane, one-off tasks that are very time-consuming and essentially just replace them with a linear set of tasks that all revolve around the plain English documentation. So I go from, for a small project, about 40 hours of uh, acceptance testing effort to about 10 hours, which is pretty good. So uh, I have, uh, just for the hell of it, I wrote a little domain name management platform. It has questionable features like recommending silly domain names for you to register. And uh, 
about 15, 20 minutes ago, I wrote a little test to verify some of the uh, input validation, which I'll run right now. And I don't know if you can see this uh, too well on the screen. Let's try this. I have my plain English text right here. Go to the URL, click a link, fill out a form, verify that an error message shows up, and a couple times I tell it to take a screenshot. So my script's running here. It's going to keep me apprised of the status. Of course, with the API, you can always run a test, get an ID back, and come back and pick it up later. All your tests are asked. That's a feature. Yeah, it, it was just that with uh, MST toning down his uh, language, I figured I had to contribute, you know? Thank you. Yep. <laughs> so, I get my tap output here, lets me know all my tests passed. And if I go onto the website, I get my test results here, and I can click a link, see the screenshots. It's pretty neat. It's in beta right now, and in beta it is free. Testify.com slash Yapsy. You have any questions, harass the Grant Street guys. They're the ones who are constantly telling you they're hiring. And uh, my own pitch, check out DomainCrate.com. It's domain registration, so it still sucks, but it sucks less. Thanks. <laughs>I'm Randall Schwartz. You probably know me from my books and Floss Weekly and things like that. But one of the other hats that I wear is uh, LinuxFund.org. I'm on the board of LinuxFund.org. We uh, make money by direct donations with 501c3. We also get, make money by people carrying around a credit card with a penguin on it and using it in everyday transactions. We get some of the affiliate fees for that. We're trying to give away a couple thousand bucks a month, really low overhead. Just send a piece of email to us and say what you want the $1,000 or $2,000 to do. We're just trying to give it away. We don't have enough people to give it away to. So please uh, come do that. And also, um, we own open.org, the domain. Don't ask how we got it, but we have that. We haven't figured out exactly what to do with the answer. So if you have ideas, suggestions, although that's going to open a bike shedding, I already know. But anyway, <laughs> let's see what we can do with that. Because really, it's, it's just been parked for a year. We don't know what to do with it. So uh, let me know. Thanks. Hello. Uh, while I set up, uh, I am Chris Naren Aperon, going to be talking about something called uh, Tmux, which you might be familiar with uh, if, as being compared to GNU Screen. And the idea with Tmux is that it is uh, more minimum but more flexible at the same time. It is something newer based on, well, using the libevent uh, C library for doing uh, all the input I.O. and that kind of thing. And it has some cool features that have made doing work for me as a Unix-loving system and developer type thing rather easy. And once this thing decides to actually work, I'll try to show it to you. Okay, so uh, here we go. Uh, right, so we start a new session. This is uh, pretty easy, you know, that kind of thing. Um, one of the, the really simplest things that... Uh, that Tmux does that GNU Screen has difficulty with is doing different kinds of splits like this or uh, doing uh, different arrangements of windows like this. This is uh, all the different presets. There are also uh, ways to interact with it in the command line, if I remember the commands correctly. Uh, what? what does that say? Tmux list commands. There we go. There we go. Big, 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 big. Tmux. Is it create pane? Yeah, that's it. Create pane. No? Oh, whatever. So we can do this. You can do that. And, you know, and it, it's not actually crashing, which is... I use an experimental thing for doing splits on Tmux and... Or, excuse me, on screen. It tend to crash a lot. But there's this in Tmux. It, it supports it more natively. So the idea is that uh, since it's built into Tmux, it supports it. But there's also more interesting things like the ability to move a pane from 
one Tmux session to another. Like say for example, you wanted to change your shell config in all your shells, right? So, but you have this ERC session that's been up for 200 days and you'd feel really, really, really sad if you had to quit the thing. And then you'd have to configure all your channels, even though you, the, the, the add all channels alias sometimes works, sometimes doesn't, but whatever. Maybe you forgot to add the network for the new client you're contracting with, whatever. You wanted to move the ERC session to a new Tmux. You can do that with the move pane command. What that does is uh, tmux move pain. What? <laughs> no, no, no. I, I'm sure if this works. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is doing a live demo and of course it is falling over horribly. Um, yes, this command script pain. No, 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 no. Move window, okay, there you go. You can't, well, okay, there's a concept of pane, which is the three things that you see up here. There's a concept of window, which is the collection of three panes that you see here. So basically, I have my Tmux in a pane. The pane was the occupying the whole window. So I wanted to move that to a new Tmux, pain, or new Tmux session, so I used the move window command to move the window on the Linode with the Ursi. Linode is awesome, by the way. Um, they're not paying me to say that. I moved the IRC session from this, from that old session to the new one. And so I'm still up on IRC after 200 plus days. Um, that is just something that Tmux does. It's also useful for, say you start a, a command that you wanted to keep, I mean it, is, it does detaching and it does reconnecting that kind of thing. And there's also things like uh, set end, you could do show end and that kind of thing, which uh, you can do Tmux set end. Someone's ringing. It is not me. Um, yes. So you can. Um, <laughs> yes. Yes. So you can do uh, set end and show end and that kind of thing, which is useful for fixing the problem, the common problem, whereby if you reconnect to a Tmux session, your secure shell agent will be falling over. The idea here is that you can use this in tandem with a uh, quick, quick, simple shell script, which will take the environment variable for Tmux, which is separate from your shell, and then you can put it into your shell by looking at the Tmux environment variable from within Tmux and therefore fix your secure shell agent or your GPG agent. But GPG sucks, by the way. Um, yes, so um, that's, that's really the, the, the quickest, simplest thing that I can go over in about five minutes. So thank you. Uh, do try it. It's um, open source and all that good stuff. So there you go. Thank you. So real quick, uh, I'm James. Like a lot of other guys who are doing the one minute thing, uh, this is my first Yapsi. I'm really excited to have come here. If you'd asked me a month ago what I thought about Perl, I think like a lot of people who are probably not in this room, they would have said, people still use that? Um, and I am really incredibly encouraged by everything that I've learned this weekend. I feel like I learned a lot. Um, you guys, the people in this room, have put together a Perl renaissance in the last two to three years, as nearly as I can tell, where 10 years ago, the, the questions of stagnancy were serious ones. And you guys have overcome it, and that's fantastic, and I'm really excited to be coming back to Pearl after so long away. That having been said, uh, if you're not taking off uh, tonight and you're going to be around tomorrow morning, I want to go run by the lake. Who wants to go run by the lake? <laughs> Let's go run by the lake. We'll, we'll go running by the lake in the morning. It'll be cool. Just If you want to go, come find me afterwards. It'll be, it'll be fun. <laughs> so, hi, I'm Gene Hack. I'm going to talk about Hyde. I'm Miyagawa Jekyll. I also verbed Miyagawa. <laughs> Jekyll is a static website generator. It's written in Ruby. It's blog aware. It's GitHub friendly. It's got a built-in dev server. It uses Markdown or Textile, whatever you like, and it's got pluggable templates and blah, blah, blah. It's cool. Hyde does, all, Hyde does all that stuff too. Passes the Jekyll test suite. It's written in Perl. It's not on CPAN yet. Um, so what I learned from doing this <laughs> Is if you went to Miyagawa's talk, this is like the, the TLDR version of it. This is good. It's fun to do this. It's interesting, and you'll learn stuff. You should probably try to do it at least once. You don't need to know the language that the project you're jacking is written in because <laughs> all the dynamic languages are pretty much the same. You just kind of look at the overall language, the logic flow, and it's, you know, you'll learn stuff about the architecture, and it's fun. 
pick a weekend and a project and just, you know, do it. <laughs> so who in the room has a module on CPAN? At least one. All right. Who has a website for their module on CPAN? Wah, wah. <laughs> if you host your project on GitHub, they added a feature in the past couple of months that gives you a very easy out in the admin section. There's this automatic page generator thing. It makes sites for you that are templated. They look good. It's really easy. You can actually, there's another button that lets you copy your readme file over to, as the basis for this. Um, there's all kinds of themes that are available. Take two minutes for your projects that are hosted on GitHub and just fucking do it. It, it looks more professional. And as Miyagawa was saying in his talk around names, this makes things more real to people if you have an actual website as opposed to just an entry on CPAN. Or there's another option. Hide drive something called Dizilla plugin publish website from README, which will do the exact same thing for you as part of your diesel publishing flow. Only it doesn't actually exist yet. Yet. I'm going to write it. You should come help me. There's the code. Fork it. Thanks. Hi everyone, I'm um, Uri. I had a plug the other day. I figured I'd do a, you know, another plug, burn your brains with it and all that kind of thing. If you're looking for work, looking for jobs, you have jobs, you want help finding people, contact pearlhunter.com. We had a great boff the other day, about 10 people showed up. Um, who was there at the boff? Raise your hand. Nobody here. Great. Okay. <laughs> Other few guys there. Okay. That's it. Uh, Pearlhunter.com. Thank you. Hi. Uh, I'm Brandon Singer. I'm an undergrad at UChicago. Uh, and I've used Pearl for a while just for sort of one-off scripts. Um, but I haven't really tried to tackle a big project. Um, so this is sort of an overview of uh, what I'm thinking about. Um, there's a site called uh, Brisnet, and it has a lot of uh, data about horse races. Um, they've got every, every day they update new information. Um, it's uh, brisnet.com, B-R-I-S-N-E-T.com. Um, and they do charge for it, uh, but they do have the free, the free data available, um, except it cycles through, and they've only got five days' worth of data. Um, so I've been scraping that from the site. Uh, and so far, for the past few weeks, I have about 5,000 races, um, at least the betting data. And then the racing data have tens of thousands left because there's more of that in the files. The problem is they're formatted in a PDF file, and it's not that easy to access. Um, but the CAM PDF module makes it pretty easy. Um, with some regular expressions, it's not too hard. Um, so this is what it looks like uh, from the website. This is the PDF. It's really dense. Uh, to give you an example, uh, here's just sort of an explanation of what they have. Everything from medication uh, to track conditions to weather uh, to the horse's uh, past few race results. Um, so it's a lot of information. Um, but with a little bit of code, um, looks something like this with CAM PDF. Uh, you can get an output that looks sort of like this. It's not perfect, but it's, it's decent with regular expressions. Um, I haven't gotten too far with that yet. I just know it, it works well enough. Um, and then uh, another form of the data they have is an HTML file with uh, all of the, the results and the winnings um, for each different type of bet. Um, and pushing the, putting these together uh, will make for a pretty complete uh, data set on, on horse racing, running whatever kind of models or simulations you need to do. Um, so from here on out, uh, I'm trying to streamline what I have right now uh, I just have a few scripts uh, that I'm trying to sort of work into a, a pro module. Um, and I have to sort of uh, address the fact that the, the data is not going to be complete. Um, and I have to make up for, uh, for missing data or data that changes from race to race, like if a horse gets traded to a different trainer uh, or bought. Um, and then sort of once I have all of the data in the database, uh, I'm going to try and sort of experiment with different uh, methods of, of analyzing it and trying to exploit the, um, the data. Uh, and then trying to find a way to uh, access the data no matter what, what device I'm on. Um, I've been looking into not only web interfaces but also text message um, just in case if I'm at a track and it doesn't allow laptops or internet, um, that would be a really convenient way of handling it. Um, so, and because I'm scraping it from the site and they're free, I'm not sure exactly what I can legally make money off of or release for free. Uh, so I'm sort of going to kind of play that by ear, see how it goes. Uh, but if you'd like to help out, let me know. 
Uh, here's my email. I'm also graduating uh, soon and looking for work. So if you have questions, comments, anything, all right, anything, just send me an email uh, and check out my GitHub. I don't have too much there now. I have a lot of private stuff, but nothing public. Uh, I'm hoping as this project continues, I'll have stuff to release, whether as a full module or just pieces. Um, thank you. So I'd like to announce a new uh, ProMonger group. We now have hardware.pm. Uh, Thanks to Jay Hanna, we have a mailing list. Um, I have an organizational unit on GitHub. So there definitely will be, you know, owner bits spread like water if you come. Um, and you can use apparently cool new tools. Thanks, Gene Hack, to build us nice websites, you know. Um, so anyway, um, hardware.pm. It's non-geographical, obviously. So anyway, join up. Okay, well, I'm doing this talk all wrong. First of all, I want to say it's my first Yopsi. It's been very nice. I hope to come on back. And uh, it's really been great. Um, but you know, usually when you do a talk, you, you, you write it and you polish it and then you like maybe present it to yourself in the mirror or to your spouse or your, to your boss and then you present it in front of a whole group. Well, I did this one hastily and I'm presenting to the whole group and will eventually present it to my boss. <laughs> so <laughs> the title of my talk is I hate this slide but I still can use it to my advantage. And as you can tell, I do bioinformatics at Purdue. Now, the slide I'm talking about is this slide here, which unfortunately, so I go to a lot of biological talks of bio, uh, uh, and people with biology and went to a couple, like, couple of weeks ago, and each time they brought up this damn slide, and I hate it. And even today, somebody brought up this slide. It was pretty bad. So why do I hate this slide? Well, it's not because of the data. It's because of the way it's put together. So we have the cost of sequencing, and you can see that there's an inflection point and it's really gotten really, really cheap lately. And everybody says, oh, well, that's comparable to Moore's Law. Moore's Law is not doing a very good job there, you know, and, and the idea is, I guess, that, you know, the cost of sequencing is so bad that it's not keeping up with, you know, Moore's Law is not keeping up with it. But what is Moore's Law? We all know Moore's Law is just simply a number of transistors per, you know, whatever you put on the chip. It doubles every... Two, two years or something like that. It has nothing to do with cost, nothing at all. So, I mean, the cost of doing computing doesn't necessarily follow Moore's law. I mean, the cost of a chip is just a, you know, doesn't have to do anything with the total cost of uh, sequencing. Or, you know, the speed of computing has nothing to do with uh, how fast I can get things done. I could have better algorithms. I could have worse algorithms. I could do multi-CPUs or not anything else at all. Anyway, this is my big bugaboo. I keep talking to my boss about it. He says, just get over with it. They just mean Moore's Law. And I say, well, why don't they use an exponential function? I mean, say, sequencing is not following an exponential function. But you go into a biology group, and somebody puts up the slide, and they say, it's not following Moore's Law. And everybody looks around to each other and says, oh, yeah, I've heard of Moore's Law before. It must mean something. <sighs> OK, so I've resigned myself to go with the flow and use Moore's Law to my advantage, I hope. So, my first slide. Okay, the inverse of my salary. So this is my salary. I've been working at the genomics facility for about as long as the slide has been going on, which has been over 10 years. And plotting the, you know, what my salary looks like, it hasn't been very good. It's not following Moore's Law. <laughs> well, if we're gonna follow Moore's Law, make my salary follow Moore's Law. <laughs> and, you know, in the meantime, the amount of work I'm doing, how much data processing I get done every, every week is, well, you know, I'm not quite following what the, the DNA sequences are doing at the moment, but I'm doing a pretty good job. And then I can go and say, well, what's my value to Purdue off of this? You know, you know, my, my, you know how much they're paying me versus how much I'm working. My value's pretty damn good. <laughs> so, so I come up with this Q, QRMA. <laughs> Uh, asset, because my boss has been lately saying, get this stuff done faster, get this done faster. Well, I'm saying, well, I'm going to use the red light now and say, quit writing my ass. I'm doing a good job here. <laughs> Hello 
again. I'm still Udall. Uh, we've already had a show of hands of who's, you know, their first time here. But who is it among the first time here that this is actually your first encounter, interaction, with the Pearl community at large? Big show of hands, please. It's a lot of people. Now that you're here, don't disappear. <laughs> I, I give this talk every year at Yapsi when I can. And, uh, you don't have to wait till the next Yapsi. I know you're all coming back to Yapsi. You're inspired. But you want that fix of social interaction during the year. And we have IRC, we have Pearlmongers. We'll help you start a Pearlmongers group if you don't have one nearby. And uh, there's just lots and lots of options, real time, semi real time, face to face. And now there's documentation for it. On anything from Pearl 10 on, you can say Pearl Doc space Pearl community and we've got a whole lot of options for you there or you can just ask me and I'll tell you how to get your fix so uh, I hope I know I'll see you all again very soon and I love you all madly thank you that Tim I am that Tim I am, I dislike his code, that Tim I am. <laughs> do you like Pearl and Sipan? I do not like them, Tim I am. I will not code Pearl and Sipan. Would they fit your application frame? My application frame? Are you inane? <laughs> not to model, view, or control. Don't play your game. I do not like Pearl and Sipan. I do not like them, Tim I am. Do you like Catalyst, Dancer, or Modelicious? All declare they are delicious. <laughs> Catalyst, Dancer, Modelicious, how do you, they, you declare them to be delicious? They will not fit my application frame. I declare to you, sir, you are inane. I do not like Pelancy Pan. I do not like them, Tim I am. Would you like to try Pulsitz? Would you try its pearly strips? I would not like to try pearl sits. I could not try its pearly strips. I do not like pearl and sipan. I do not like them, Tim, I am. Would you deploy with my pearl five? <laughs> it now has moose. It's so alive. <laughs> I will not deploy with your pearl five. I don't believe that it's alive. Get it into your pearly head, we spread the word that Pearl is dead. I do not like Pearl and Zipan. I do not like them, Tim I am. Would you use it on a plane? <laughs> I cannot use it on a plane, not even Larry is that insane. <laughs> Would you use it for a wiki? It makes hard things seem less tricky. I could not use it for a wiki. I think you may have took the mickey. <laughs> no, on a plane, that's insane. I'll be my application frame. No catalyst, dancer, or no delicious. Even if they are delicious, I will not tie your pearly sits. I do not want its pearly tricks. I won't deploy an Apple 5. I will not listen. It's not alive. I do not like Palancy Pan. I do not like them. Tim, I am. You could use our pearl to curl. You pearl to curl, your pearl to curl. I could never give it a whirl. Would you like to try some pod? <laughs> try some pod, you silly sod. Do I look like a pearl god? Not on a plane as that's insane. I'll be my application's frame. No catalyst, dancer, or more delicious, even if they are delicious. I will not try your pearly sits. I do not want its pearly tricks. I won't deploy an Apple 5. I will not listen. It's not alive. I could not use it for my wiki, even if it isn't tricky. Or to a server, I won't kill. I cannot use that tricksy pearl. No, will I try the pearly pod? I am not a pearly god. I do not like Pelancy Pan. I do not like them, Tim I am. You do not like them, you might say, but they are just an install away. We have made it easy to develop using our pearl brew. 
And Sipan has now gone one better. It has an appy to make it meta. <laughs> Tim, if you will let me be, I will install it. It's all free. Tim. I like Pearl and Sipan. <laughs> and I will be a pearly god. I will learn to use your pod. I will take this scripty pearl to my server I will kill. Pearl 5, Pearl 5, for you I strive and on your many services thrive. And I will strip with our pearl sits and try extraordinary tricks. Use dancer cat and more delicious. Oh, they do, they taste delicious. It will be my application frame. I'd even use it on a plane. I will use pearl here and there. I will use pearl anywhere. You pearly pearl, you are alive and this year you reached 25. I do so like Pearl and Sipan. I do so like them. Tim, I am. Thank you. What is wrong with the British? Seriously. I was looking at him, what the hell is this? <laughs> that was so cool. All right, I'm going to try to speak closer to the microphone because I didn't hear anyone else. So if, um, if uh, I'm not clear, please let me know. I'm going to start with the uh, oblivious, obvious dancer tutorial. So do we, are we starting the clock? Because I'm starting mine. All right, running. So we're going to start. Website's going to be really fast. We're going to find a module on CPAN using text. We're going to find text upside down and it turns text upside down. Oh, my god. <laughs> Uh, basically, it looks like that, upside down, give it a text, that's pretty simple, we install Dancer, you know how it works, we create the skeleton using a Dancer application, that's when we install, you just run it, directory structure, that's how it looks, we go on to the adding code, to the lib, there's a get slash, and that's where you put your stuff, uh, we're going to add the code, get a parameter using params, there we go, the parameter is called text, we get it, we turn it upside down, it's the upside down, uh, up, whatever, subroutine, and then we put it inside the get route, and we render it using the index.tt, and uh, we call a template, it takes index and adds the TT and give it the text, we give it the upside down text. Then we're going to put it all together. This is how it looks, this is the entire dancer code. Then we're going to create the template, uh, basically a form with that send text, adds text the input to write the text, display the text upside down, push the button. Somehow there's a profit there. Uh, we have the form here and uh, we put the text uh, value there and um, that's an input that's going to show the text and uh, that's going to submit more text and that's about it. And This is how it looks. This is actually a website that uh, Marco Fontani wrote. I just liked it so much I had to do a lightning talk about it. All right. Moving on. This is my actual talk. Um, I submitted the first one that I wanted to do this. Where's Raffle? Raise your hand. I love that guy. All right. Uh, so I've been here. This is my first time in the States. Seriously. Uh, first time in the Apps in North America. Thank you. All right. So I got to do this pretty quickly as well. Excuse me. Uh, these basically the stuff I did this week. Um, well, first of all, I met a lot of people. I met Donald. Donald's my roommate. Donald's an ex-armed robber. All right, he did prison time. He was in a gang. He uh, at 15 he went to prison. That's why he moved to Madison. Good luck. He's actually the nicest person I've ever met, and I spoke to him as much as I could. Seriously, uh, he used to teach English to wise men. He used to be a barber. Of course, he used to be a barber. Uh, he's a reverend. And he has a lesbian ex-wife, and they have six kids. I love that sentence where he said she decided that she's attracted to women. He was like, what do you mean? We have six kids. I don't, how does that work? All right, so uh, um, I don't want to give a bad impression on Donald. I love that guy and spoke to him as much as I could. He was one of the most interesting and, and nicest people I've ever met. I met Dieter. Dieter is a hardcore Christian. I'm not. Um, However, and, and oh, and he does across America. He's actually doing across across America. I don't know, like, I'm not kidding. Um, I don't know why he's not from here. He's from Australia. I don't want to tell you what he, was, what he did in Australia. However, we did hang a lot together. Even though we were really different in our uh, theological uh, ideas, uh, we hang out a lot. We went to a bike ride and we went to a capital tour building. We were like a, a, a couple. And uh, we went to a sing-along protest. Um, we went to this. this, this was really cool, I have pictures, um, and he doesn't like me cursing, so I'm standing there, I'm talking to the people about the process, and tell me what Walker does, and I keep saying, that asshole, that motherfucker, and I keep swearing like a five-year-old, and, well, maybe not five-year-old, like, I don't know, I don't know how, 
how many five year olds curse over there, but in Israel, we really curse. And, um, and I keep saying, that guy, that, and I keep cursing, he's looking at me from the side saying, language, and my name is always, shit, sorry. Wait, all right. So I have a few different experiences. Um, I, every time I meet someone here, they say, oh, you're from Israel, cool. And I have to reply, well, no, not really, but thank you. I really do appreciate the gesture. Um, I went to Bed Bath & Beyond, it took me an hour, I called my mom, what do you want? She says, Twizzers holders. Really? I bought five packs, the guy thought I was robbing them and opening a, a, a chapter over there trying to compete. Uh, I saw a cop dunked into water, this was my best day ever in the States. <laughs> I went to a few shows, a metal show, a punk show, a karaoke, superstars show, I went to a crappy show, Dave can vouch for that. Um, and every time someone meets me, they say, so you're the dancer guy. <laughs> All right. Um, I have a few not really as I'm wrapping up. Um, so I found, I found uh, Bikes for Rent, the $20 for 24 hours. That was really cool. Well, not really, because then someone told me that there are free bikes available elsewhere. <laughs> so I went and got cheap bikes for free. Well, it, it would have been great, but not really because my ass really hurts. They're really, really cheap. Every time I get up on them, it's like, damn it. Uh, and and the, oh, by the way, the deal was I have to return them by November. It was really hard, hard to hold the laughter and say, uh, I think I can do it. <laughs> All right. Uh, there's a con here. It starts, apparently there are no mandatory motorcycle helmets. I'm a motorcycle dr uh, driver. But the, the pro here is that you have automatic gene pool printing. I really like that idea. That is really cool. Do I have, uh, do I have another minute? All right, I'm, I'm getting there. Um, so I decided to give a talk at the Apsi. That's a pro, right? Yeah. And uh, I was up against Tom Duran, Randall Schwartz. God damn it. How am I going to compete with that thing? All right. I suggest to do a talk about my experience. This is this talk. Dave heard me and Dave Rolski suggested he will do a talk about how much I eat, which is apparently a lot. <laughs> I finished the whole menu of a restaurant. I'm not kidding. All right. Uh, I was offered a drink a few times. It was the first time ever someone offered me a drink. Con, I don't drink at all, ever. If anyone wants to buy me water, thanks. All right. Uh, lastly, I have videos of uh, Augie, Tom, Raffle, and Jay Rockway at a karaoke. They're on sale. Now, <laughs> but there is, there is a con to it. The con is, I'm also in the video. So I can't really give it to you. All right, lastly, uh, I came up with the bingo cards idea, sort of, I, well, so I, I saw it elsewhere and I linked JT to it and what do you think they did? And then he was like, that's a good idea. And he said, yes, my idea. And um, the con was that, uh, I have the card with me here. Uh, I don't know if how many of you filled it up, but I'm missing one thing, and that's the, um, I didn't get a bingo because I'm missing the, where the Yapsi t-shirt? So I was, I was missing it until then, and my, my lovely assistant will, is going to help me. So uh, a moment of your time. All right, so bingo. bingo. All right. And lastly, I had, a lovely time with this. Uh, Larry, wherever you are, thank you. So, that's it. So I have two announcements from uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, one cool, one maybe cool, we don't know yet. So we still don't know when we get to have PPW yet, um, but it may or may not happen, who knows, we're figuring it out. But that's kind of Carnegie Mellon with dates. But the one cool thing Carnegie Mellon did with CERT is they released the secure coding standard for Perl, which they did first in C, C++, and Java, and then Perl. So not Ruby, not Python, and all that. It's really cool stuff. The really weird thing is my wife told me about it. Um, <laughs> not the Perl community. So I hope you guys uh, jump on the CERT website, take a look at the coding standard, and maybe give some feedback to them and make sure that we as a community appreciate it. Thank you. So, we also need a talk to introduce the people to the YAPS Europe 2012. So, it will be in Frankfurt, I think you guys know. Uh, from the 20th August to the 22, uh, 22, uh, 22 August. Um, <coughs> it will be in the middle of Germany, in the middle of Europe, at Frankfurt. And that's why I suggest people, if, if you thought about coming, you should come because you can actually reach nearly everything from there. Two hours flight everywhere, four or five hours train, you get everywhere, you get to Prague, you get to Rome, to get to Paris, to London, to Berlin. You can actually go everywhere and make a nice holiday after or before the, after or before the Yapsi. Or, 
<laughs> Can you please wait till the slide comes? Yes, thanks. <laughs> so, so uh, you could also go to both, uh, Barcelona or Athen because it's really cheap right now. <laughs> um, uh, Matt S. Trout and Larry Wall are coming. They already said they come. Um, and uh, listen, Wendy will bring the biggest pearl bookshelf with all the pearl books. <laughs> Um, and also, Yapsi U and move to, uh, move to Moose Hackathon is uh, move to Moose Hackathon is two days after the Yapsi U. And uh, Rene Becker told me there is a program between. Sadly, he doesn't told me what program. <laughs> so there is something in between. So when you have want, wanted to go to the move to Moose Hackathon, then you can also come. And that is the all. And sadly, I can't say really more because it's a Yapsi and it will be cool, as you know. So thank you. So I figured since I had a, con, uh, a conference here in Madison, I should use it a little bit to uh, promote Madmongers. So uh, there's a lot of people from Madison in here right now uh, that don't ever come to Madmongers. So I just wanted to say the third Tuesday of every month, so therefore July 17th will be the next one, uh, come on down to the Essen House, 7 o'clock, third Tuesday of every month. Join us, we do awesome talks, and if there's some area of Pearl that you just want to learn something more about, uh, we'll do a talk for you on that topic. You just suggest it. All right, thanks. Does this microphone work? No. Thank you. All right, um, does this work? Can, you, can, this, can anyone hear this? Yeah, it's just, I, I don't know why that's happened. It's just some misalignment thing. The, the slides are particularly unimportant, so I wouldn't worry about that. Okay, so I've seen a lot of talks that advocate worse is better. Um, and like the usual justification is it worked for Unix, and I'm lazy, so let's go with it. So I saw some code um, for downloading a web page that somebody gave um, as a worse is better example. Um, this is the version that I wrote because I wasn't actually at the talk. So the web page to download is just in dollar sign underscore. And then that's pretty much how you would download a web page, right? Like you just strip out the last thing and then it'll probably show up in a file eventually. <laughs> so there, there's nothing wrong with that, right? I tried it and it works. Uh, I put a carefully named text file on my web server and then downloaded it and it was in that variable. So that must mean it's good. But the code kind of feels bad, don't you think? Doesn't there feel like there's something wrong with this somewhere? Okay, so it kind of looks like line noise up at the top. That should worry you a little bit. There are a lot of assumptions like what the file's going to be called and that there aren't going to be redirects. Then there's all this quoting and parsing. Uh, we're executing the shell at some point. We're catting things. Um, and the code is all glue. Um, there's really no way to improve this for next time, right? The next time you want to download a web page, you're just going to cut and paste the same stuff. Um, and when is it ever going to get better? When are you going to make this better? Um, also, like overriding files based on what the server sends you and deleting stuff and executing shell commands is bad. I mostly put this slide in here for the people that download this talk later and they're like, ooh, this is how you get a web page in Perl. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we want to be able to improve our code, right? Like even though worse is better, we want to be able to improve the code and get better over time, right? Because we don't want to be worse forever. Otherwise, it would be like 1960, and we'd be like flipping switches on ENIAC or whatever you guys did back then. <laughs> um, yeah, so writing this code from scratch every time is not helpful. We don't learn anything. We can't reuse anything. Um, so what can we do that's better than that? Well, I say we should learn about libraries and learn about programming. Um, we should let your code improve as you improve as a programmer. Let the libraries handle the details and let your code, your application code, describe its function, not how to do something. Say, I want this web page, not strip off the path using this regex and then system to w get, and so on. And so what I say is don't be a library author when you're being an application author, right? Your application is a separate piece of code. Your libraries are a separate piece of code. And focus on each one um, at the same time, or at different times. OK, so my first foray into this was any event subprocess, which is basically like po component um, run. Uh, okay, so I was doing the same thing over and over, like I was executing processes, wait PID, dumping FDs, who knows what I was doing. Um, and I didn't know what I was doing. Like nothing good ever came of that. Um, my life was sad because every time I wanted to exec a process, it just didn't work the way I wanted. And then I made this smiley face regularly. Uh, 
So one day I decided I was going to learn everything about Unix. I was going to learn about pipes and FDs and DUP and pseudo TTYs and sockets and all this good stuff so that I could write a library that could actually be improved. Like instead of writing the shitty code every time, I'd have it in a library and then I could improve it as I learned more. And now my stuff just works. When I want to exec a subprocess, yeah, okay, so there's this thousand lines of code I wrote to make it clean. But I only see one code uh, in my application, one line of code in my application. And my stuff just works now. Like I can write the byte control C to my process um, and then it gets sig int uh, just from the magic of Unix. So other thoughts. Um, if programming seems hard, you're doing it wrong. I've seen a lot of hacks um, where people like get themselves into some problem and then they write code to get themselves out of the problem and this just snowballs. If you need a lot of hacks to like do something, you've done something else wrong. Step back and try to think about what you're trying to achieve. Okay, so the test trap talk. Yep, I like the test trap talk. If you have to do this, if you have to use test trap to make your code testable, you've done something horribly wrong. Um, and Randall's argument was you can't touch the code. Well, you, you have to touch the code. You can't be a programmer if you can't edit the code. Don't hack around it. Figure out how to edit the code. When you can improve your code, uh, you need less hacks. Okay, so I'm going to skip this example because it's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm out of time. Um, yeah, so if programming is hard, it's because you made it hard. Um, try to do something better and it will be better. Feel good about writing good code. Don't let people talk you into worse is better. Write good code. Learn all the time so you can improve your libraries. Use your knowledge to write better code. Don't trade the future for now. Spend some time now. Um, and better is better, not worse is better. Uh, hello, everybody. I just wanted to uh, give a big compliment to the YEPSI North America staff, Madmongers, for putting on the live streaming video of YAPSI. <laughs> and making sure that what we experience here can be shared with everybody around the world. And I've seen on IRC and everybody else, people are watching. Thank you. Yay. And let's do this again next year and the year after that and at all the APSI events, please. I would actually like to point out that the talk I gave earlier was about a piece of sponsored development for a customer of Shadow Cats, which is Social Flow, who were kind enough to let me present it. And their entire de development team gathered round and watched the video of my talk about the software they paid us to build for them. So cool! <laughs> this is the end of everything! So, I happen to do quite a lot of supporting people. You got our bloody thing. You got it. Use a sufficiently colorful British curse word, it'll make it work. <laughs> there we go. So, this is the end of everything. I happen to hang out quite a lot on Freenode Hash Pearl, um, helping people do things which. Um, allows me to um, discover all sorts of interesting things that new people to Pearl are um, try, uh, trying to deal with and uh, so on and so forth and actually getting an idea of what problems people are striking and one of the um, things that always happens is people say but I can't use CPAN when we recommend modules to them oh, oh my god I hate this so much I mean I, I, I can deal with a fair amount of dirt but the refusal to use CPAN Pearl 5 is a virtual machine, CBAN is the language. The urge to end them is rising. There's only one thing to do, which is to go, why? Why do you think you can't use CBAN? I go, I'm not root. So I go, well, that's absolutely fine. Here's how you make CBAN.pm do the right thing. All you need to do is set four configuration options, reload the index, go out to the shell, log back in, don't get any of those steps wrong in any way, shape, or form. Upgrade your version of module build because you won't change the directory paths. So it, uh, if you've got one before 0.38, it all breaks when you upgrade past it. The new paths, by the way, are better, and that was years ago. Um, and I'm not actually really complaining about that. But oh my god, you get to the point of 20 minutes later, and they've still not got a module installed. Ah! <laughs> so I wrote local lib, yeah! which ultimately. 
Okay, so far, so good. And then they go, well, I need to deploy a single file because it needs to be copied to a particular server. Oh! Uh, well, okay, let's try and make PAR do the right thing. All you need to do is run PP with these 27 different options. And then it's going to blow up again and again and again. And 20 minutes later, ah! So I wrote up Fatpacker. Again, so far, so good. And then Mia Gow was kind enough to use that fat packer to bundle local lib into CPAN minus. Makes things even easier. Uh, so, so far, so good. And um, then you run into the other problem because they go, this script needs to run once on 200 machines. And fat packing is, is kind of, an, it, it's relatively easy, but it is still a noticeable amount of effort. Oh, fair point. God damn it! <laughs> okay, well, da, 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 scrabble about, scrabble about. There's going to be a plan B to this. Um, oh, well, I mean, everybody knows about underscore underscore data. That goes, Pearl, please give me your file handle for the rest of this file until you reach underscore underscore end. Now, underscore underscore end is fascinating because at that point, the Pearl compiler stops reading. And Pearl stops parsing. And, hmm, let me see. Uh, if you invoke Perl dash, then it's reading the script from stood in. But when it hits underscore underscore end, stood in stays open. And that's where it starts getting interesting. <laughs> that means that I can use a fat packed bootstrap, do an open to to another machine, SSH to the host, invoke Perl dash, print the fat packed version of the bootstrap code, and then print underscore underscore end. And now I've got stood in and stood out to do my bidding for whatever that fat pack script is doing. Well, okay, what about communications? Communications back and forth? Well, you know, lines of JSON on the wire, because I am stuffed if I am inventing a protocol. This is another yak I'm shaving already here, yes? <laughs> um, and so you can do something like JSON new, and it's got this lovely API for filter JSON single key object. So if it gets a hash ref that basically just contains a key of remote object and an ID, it can take the ID and inflate it to a remote object. Um, and what you're actually doing is inflating it to a local proxy that calls the remote object. And that's easy, it's just a proxy object with autoload. Autoload is the least scary thing here. <laughs> and then, you know, you, you call it, you grab into your remote. Um, obviously, you can't actually use a method for that. I have to use the bare hash ref because I'm using an autoload to proxy all method calls across the wire. I didn't want to reserve a method name. Because, uh, again, when autoload is the least crack fuel thing, you may as well. Okay. Um, oh, 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 no, I have a problem again. What about the things that I did in Fatpack? So I don't want to have to check it up front, because having to check it up front is what made Fatpack annoying to use in the first place. Um, uh, hang on a minute. Fatpacker itself uses a code ref in at ink. Well, you know, um, well, nobody said that I could only use one. Better still, I can actually use an object in that ink. I can have one of each. Uh, so my object looks something like this, and it has an ink method, which has to be declared with a fully qualified name because the ink glob is normally forced into main so that you get percent ink and that ink in all of your files. Um, do not define a constant called env. That's really confusing, by the way, because env gets forced into main as well. Don't ask anyway. So, uh, so anyway. Source for, give me the source to this module, then I can open a string file handle to the code and return it, and Perl will load it as if it was there. That's the same thing that Fatpack is doing. But I now have the question of, well, where do I get the self arrow sender from? Ah, well, that's the easy bit. Because it's a remote object system. So I just grab a remote object from the host machine, and it's that ink I can use. Um, so the source host that's actually done the SSHing in, it goes through its own that ink, finds the module, and ships it across the wire in the form of a JSON object. <laughs> and then to add a little sugar on top, um, although by this stage, you may, uh, just because it's sweet, if it tastes of cyanide, it might taste of almonds, it might be syntactic cyanide. Man, I screwed that joke up, never mind. <laughs> um, but you can define a method called new colon colon on. Um, so that takes a dollar on, which is either a connection string or um, an already open object remote connection. And then you say, new remote, I want an object of this class. And because new colon colon on is a fully qualified method name, the method resolution is done against the package new. So you don't actually have to have loaded the class already in your local script. 
uh, you can just do some random class name, our own new colon, colon, and that's all great. So, cool, okay. Ooh, I've just had a thought. You see, last year's High Speed Lightning talk was the Devil's Rapple, which was about Evo with lexicals, which was a pure pearl, um, pearl rapple, which I wrote to be able to ship it about on the wire and fat packer and so on. Well, it's a pure pearl Evo cage. Why don't we use that? So now I can do Evo with lexicals, new on, user at host, and it's going to SSH across the wire and give me back a rapple with persistent lexicals on the far side. Uh, SSH is in and starts up, and I can use just host, and if I do user at... And um, then what it actually does is sudo up, so I can actually go SSH in and then start me another chain one that's root, um, which I've been using to do systems provisioning. So I can go leave Alan on, on the code, I can even do, you know, lexical persistence is already there. Um, or you can do it with your own class that you've written for this little ad hoc task, uh, that then, then pass whatever arguments you want across the wire. And then you can do get remote sub if you just want a subroutine. Don't want to fart around with objects, that's absolutely fine. You can get sys hostname hostname, it'll do a require on sys hostname, and call the subroutine for you with whatever arguments you supply. So if you think you still can use CPAN, I say you can. You can use CPAN, Tim I am. <laughs> I will be shipping it next week, just please let's not mention Win32, and especially not Micro Pearl on the Nintendo DS. Thank you very much. So real quick, it occurs to me that I didn't mention where we should meet if we want to run tomorrow morning. Uh, so if people are actually interested in running tomorrow morning, we should get together after the lightning talks are done, upstairs, outside, out front. Uh, immediately after the lightning talks are done, and we'll figure out when and where we want to start running from. Sound good? Sounds good. The 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 uh, the entrance closest to pile. Sounds good. Nobody. I, I will be chasing the rest of you. Matt. Matt. You're right here. Okay, we have the final lightning talk, and we're going to do a little panel discussion here. I brought up a very diverse panel. We have uh, all, we have two women, it looks like. Um, oh, <laughs> that's thirty-three um, percent. We have all different ages. <laughs> uh, Steve there is under 35, am I correct? I, I guess I was. Uh, and Cardi? <laughs> <laughs> so, all of them under 35. Okay, so we're going to have a little discussion here, and everyone here is going to contribute. Uh, it's basically, how do you like Yapsi so far? Pretty good. Yeah. Steve? <laughs> when is Pearl 6 getting released? Isn't this Yapsi Asia? Well, no, it isn't. You got the wrong one. I'm only here because I get paid to troll B5B. Well, you do that very well. You're overpaid. <laughs> I, I, channel, uh, I channel Jamie and Conway when I write all my modules. It shows. <laughs> what I like in post skills, I make up in C-pad. Say that again. <laughs> what I like in post skills, like I make up in C-pad. Okay, good, good. That's why those people who love C-pad more than it's pro. Are you sure you want secretly a less packer dude? Why? <laughs> All right, four words, four words. What would Larry do? I don't know. Larry, you out here? Where, where, what would you do here, Larry? He'd post it. Okay. <laughs> He'd start making post seven. <laughs> That's unexpected. <laughs> when is Pearl 6 getting released? Uh, <laughs> post seven. <laughs> <laughs> What, what, you guys have anything else to say? He gave me a line involving being nice about PHP, but I'm too embarrassed to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teaching Pearl to buy pet Burmese Python. Uh, and it's coming out like Python code. You're a bad, you're a bad trainer, Randall. <laughs> I only use strict in one-liners. <laughs> But they say I'm the second best pearl hacker in the world. Who's number three? 
Are we going to see him? Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying whatever I want to say now. No. <laughs> I should not have chose him. <laughs> Four words. What would Larry do? <laughs> That's his line. <laughs> you know, I, I, I wouldn't put it past you. <laughs> is a lying, underhanded, sneaky agent. We left okay. out the I love him part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, I am sneaky and underhanded. <laughs> You're a PHP lover. PHP! 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 Developer! 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 Anyone has 20 armpits? So tell, uh, uh, you pearl farmers really know how to party. <laughs> At well. the end of the line, guys. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, that's it. Thank you all. And that brings us to the end of the last of the lightning talks.